Okay, welcome back. I'm now on question number five from this P2 January 2021 International A Level Ed Excel um, paper. Now, this is question number five, which is all about proof, which is a new topic which wasn't in the syllabus previously um, before P2 was out. In the old C2, it was not there. And this is here we have to prove for all x is greater than or equal to 0, that 3x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 2 times root 3x. Now, um, I just want to mention first, why are they mentioning this, that x is greater than or equal to 0? Basically, they're saying that x is going to be something which is 0 or positive. Um, and basically, the reason they're saying this is because we have an inequality here. And we have an inequality, we have a square root. And for us to try to use some sort of proof on this, we're going to have to square both sides to get rid of the square root. And squaring both sides of inequality can be a problem. Okay, it can be a problem. So, for example, if I say something like minus 2 is greater than 3, that's true. But if I square both sides now, I end up with this side saying 4 and this side saying 9, and the inequality no longer is true. Okay, so squaring both sides of inequality can cause you to get a problem cause the, the inequality to become false. But if, for example, both sides are positive, for example, I can say 2 is um, you know, greater than 1, for example, and if they're both positive, then there's no problem. If I square this side, I square that side. If I say, for example, 7 is greater than 4, if I square both sides, it will still be true if both sides are positive. So that's the reason why they've told us that x is greater than or equal to 0. So you can say, when x is, if x is greater than or equal to 0, then 3x plus 1 will also be greater than or equal to 0. Okay, so that means it's going to be either positive or 0. And if x is greater than or equal to 0, then 2 times, in fact, this will always be greater than 0. Because you're going to have, you know, you're going to have, um, if x is 0, then this is going to be more than 0. So it's always going to be more than 0. And this 2 times the root of 3x, if x is greater than or equal to 0, this will also be greater than or equal to zero so there'll be no, no time at which okay that neither neither of these will ever be negative neither will be negative when squaring both sides ne negative before squaring both sides okay before we square both sides neither of them will be negative so therefore we can safely square both sides of this algebraic expression. I can safely say that 3x plus 1 squared is greater than or equal to 2 times the square root of 3x all squared. This I can safely say that if this is true, this is true. Why? Because x is greater than or equal to 0. And each of these are going to be either 0 or positive. That's fine. None of them will be negative. Now, if I expand this bracket, I'm going to get 9x squared plus 2 times 3x times 1, which is plus 6x, plus 1. And that's greater than or equal to, this is going to be 4 times 3x. Okay, 2 squared is 4, and root 3x squared is 3x. So I, I end up with 9x squared plus 6x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 12x. Now, if I try to bring this together on one side, I have 9x squared, 6x minus 12x is minus 6x plus 1. And now what I'm going to try to do is try to factorize this, and I can see it's a perfect square because um, I can see that I'm going to get 3x minus 1 because this is going to be 3x minus 1 all squared. I could have, I could have um, completed the square, and I would, I would have ended up like this, but I spotted that I can factorize it into a perfect square. Just like this was expanded into 9x squared plus 6x plus 1, we have the same pattern here, so this is going to be 3x minus 1, and it's greater than or equal to zero. Now this is true, okay? Um, anything squared is always going to be greater than or equal to zero. So this is, so we can see therefore that three x minus one squared is greater than or equal to zero for all values of x, okay? So we made the condition first that x must be greater than or equal to zero. So we can say therefore our original expression which was 3x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 2 times the square root of 3x is true for all 
we've proved it for all values of x and the condition that x is greater than or equal to zero as we stated okay so we've proved it because when you have a bracket that's squared it's always going to be positive that can never be negative the lowest it can be is zero okay we can say that you know the minimum point of this is zero the minimum point is equal to zero okay or never go below zero okay so therefore it will always be greater than or equal to zero okay so there we have proved question number one now five part two it says here it says show that the following statement is not true the sum of three consecutive prime numbers is always a multiple of five so what we need to do is we need to just actually prove this by what's called counter example find one example which proves this to be a false statement so let's take the prime numbers two and add the next one three and add the next one five well that gives us ten that is a multiple of five so that's okay then we take the next th three plus five plus seven that gives me eight plus seven which is fifteen well that is a multiple of five and let's try the next ones which are five plus seven plus eleven that gives me sixteen plus seven which is twenty three we can say seventeen plus five which is twenty three or 12 plus 1 which is yeah, all 23 okay so we got 23 now that is not a multiple that is not a multiple of 5 and 5 7 and 11 are consecutive prime 5 consecutive primes so therefore the statement that the sum of three consecutive prime numbers primes is always a multiple of five is always a multiple of five is false okay so that's it simple as that that's called proof by counter example so you 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 first of all try different values of what they've told you here that the sum of three consecutive prime numbers is always a multiple of five and until you find one which does not fulfill that statement so that proves that if you find one example which proves that statement to the false that means the statement there is false okay there's not it's not always that the sum of three consecutive prime numbers is a multiple of five okay so there's proof by counterexample and here we had proof by deduction okay and there we have the answer to question number five thank you for watching other questions from this paper the p2 january 2021 can be found in this playlist other questions from this um topic of proofs this new topic proofs from P2 will be found in this playlist over here and you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. On the top of the page here is a link to another P2 paper. Thank you for watching. See you soon.